The day that Faith arrived, the first thing that I noticed was just how shut down and scared and withdrawn she was. Very untrusting, yet very compliant, just giving up and putting herself on the ground as if to say, I don't want to argue, but I also don't understand. It was clear signs that she'd been abused to the point where she was just completely submitting and just hoping that nothing bad was going to happen. It was a pretty confronting sign to see and to realise just how traumatic her past must have been. I've never seen anything like it. For my experience as a trainer over the last more than a decade, I've never seen dogs this shut down before. They have been severely abused. I, I couldn't fathom what they'd experienced. It was really, really confronting. I was almost powerless to help them. You know, it really was just a case of giving them a safe place for them to call their own, giving them space, try to build trust and rapport and just allow them to come out of their shell. Eventually they got into a routine where they knew, okay, we're going outside and they started to show excitement. And then when we got to the playground and we let them off lead, they started to have a bit of spring in their step and they started to get a little bit excited, which was a great sign to see. It was the first sign that we sort of thought, hey, these guys are starting to enjoy this. <laughs> have you not been able to run around before? It's like they have I never have run. Been able to run around before, darling. What a good day. Yeah, hi, good job. <laughs> Look at how happy they are. Good dog, good dog. <laughs> Look at those little bounces! These little boxer bounces! It reminds me of those videos where the cows get released from the Yeah, and, and they the feel grass, yeah, for the grass for the first time. Yeah. Learning to relax and learning to come out of their shell and be confident and learn to trust and experience love. It's a much longer recovery process for them. And the reason being is it's all based on their own time. So you can't force these rehabilitation times. It just has to happen in their own time. Faith showed an interest in the company of other dogs. However, really avoided human interaction and took quite some time for us to be able to get her to trust for us to even walk up to her to put a lead on. Hello, sweetie pies. Oh, yep, they haven't eaten the kibble. That's okay. We got yummy. We got some yummy freshly cooked salmon for you. No, they're still very, very wary of humans. We can just leave it giving them high quality food to try to win them over. They would every now and again take food from your hand but would just come in like a, a wild animal untrusting very slowly and hesitantly and then lunge in, grab it and retreat three or four metres to eat it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I don't want to bring them out on lead because it makes them go back into their shell. It makes them, you know, remember whatever it is that they've come from. In their mind, you could see that they were just trying to bury their head in the sand and just hope it all went away without them either being injured or feeling in trouble. They are showing a lot of signs of wanting to interact through the fence. They're jumping up at the fence saying hello to the other dogs. So we're going to release them out into the abyss. <laughs> so it could be a super success or it could be, righto, everyone stop what they're doing. We're going to now catch these two boxes that have run off. So that, I, think, I think they'll be alright. It is going to be difficult catching them again, but you're hoping oh, yeah. that they might follow the pack. I'm thinking that, yeah, they'll, they'll start to join in with all these guys and when we go through the gates, they're going to wander through and come with. That's what I'm hoping for. Let's see. Let's see. Look at her, look at her go. She's happy. Look at her, look at how excited she is. Stay behind you, behind you. <laughs> That's so cool. We just let them roam around with the pack of dogs and that's when we started to see that they're starting to trust us through the, seeing the other dogs get enjoyment and praise and affection from us. But they are fearful of leads and humans. Yeah, fearful of people and leads. Yeah. Hope and Faith came to us from the pound when they had an influx of dogs after a big storm and they had nowhere for these dogs to go. So we took them in. It was originally just for a couple of days, but given just how severe their behavior was, how withdrawn and scared and intimidated they were, there was no way we wanted to send them back to a cage and to a pound environment. So we decided to keep them on and help rehabilitate them in a safe, loving, open environment. So Faith definitely loved all the intense social interactions with the other dogs. She was very dog friendly and affectionate. She never joined in on any of the games, but found a lot of comfort being around the other dogs. So we made a point of trying to give them as much dog socialization as possible. And that helped them become comfortable and familiar with the facility. It also helped them learn to trust that we're people that are going to help them, not hurt them. It helped them trust that we had their best interests at heart. Definitely sweet eyes, isn't she? Yeah. Slowly she came out of her shell and she started to show a lot more comfort and confidence around us. Hope and Faith developed a trust in the other dogs first that we were okay to come up to. So we started using that and we started using a select few dogs to be in close environments for and allow them to come up to us and slowly reach our hands out and make contact with them and develop a bond and strengthen that from there. So they do love seeing yeah. other dogs come up to you. After a few months, you could start to talk to them and you could use soothing tones and they would start to trust your voice and realize they're in no trouble, they're in no, there's no threat from us and they would allow you to come up and pat them. But for a very long time, they would never stay on their feet to receive a pat. They would always drop to the ground and again, head right on the ground and just being really submissive as if to say, I'll let you come up and touch me, but I'm no threat. They just were really untrusting. So it was a big milestone when towards the later couple of months, they would stay on their feet to receive the pat, which I thought was, you know, a big milestone. Slowly, she came out of her shell and she started to show a lot more comfort and confidence around us. Seeing her interact with the other dogs, really enjoyable to see. Bounced off her nose and she still caught it. Hello, hello, hello. 
out of the blue, Faith developed a limp. And usually when a dog starts limping, they might have just sprained their leg. And so we didn't think anything of it. After a week, she still had a limp and it looked like her limp was even getting a little bit worse. So it raised some concerns straight away. And then we booked in a vet appointment, but unfortunately, the closest appointment we could get was, I think, 10 days away. Five days from that point, we noticed she's got a big lump under her chest. And I rang the vet straight away and said, is there any way you can just fit her in for an emergency? Because we've noticed this. And straight away, the vet just said, yep, bring her in straight away. We'll, we'll squeeze her in between the appointments. And sure enough, they were just as concerned as we were in the fact that they said this could be something serious. I took some biopsy, took some samples, sent it away. We had the results back from the biopsies that it was confirmed she had a high grade cancer and it was in her mammary glands that had already spread to her lungs and had already gone into her lymphatic system. So the prognosis wasn't very good from the get-go. Initially, the first time we went to the vet, they said they suspect that it will be very fast acting and we won't have much time. After we got all the results back, all the treatment that they could offer, the absolute best case scenario would be a couple of months to you know six months maximum. We were immediately prescribed a range of different drugs to help her uh, manage what was going on. Initially, it showed a lot of promising science. She stopped limping with the pain medication and any inflammatory medication. She started chasing me on the quad bike. She started having a much higher quality of life. And we thought, wow, this is amazing. Maybe we will get a few weeks. Maybe we might get a month. It wasn't until Faith got a little sick that she really started to show me her emotional side and, and show me a, a deeper connection to me. She would sit in the front seat with me. I would just pat her and tickle her ear and touch her the whole way there. Um, and it wasn't until probably the third vet trip that she looked over at me and either put a paw on my hand or leant over and rested her head on, on my lap. And they were massive moments for me. I looked at that and went, finally, you know, she's trusting in me. And I took it as a bit of a gesture of her saying, thanks for looking after me. From that moment, our bond really started to grow. And unfortunately, it was towards the end of Faith's life that she really found comfort in me. But it was also the most important time of her life as well. I took a lot of happiness in the fact that in her toughest time, I was able to give her some comfort and some support in that. It was all looking quite good. You know, we were very excited for Faith that she was now what seemed to be pain free and was enjoying some intense activity and socialization and engaging more in me and, and getting eye contact and looking to me for guidance and having fun, which we thought was amazing. We didn't know how long it would last, but thought that was a really big moment. Faith was due to be adopted and picked up by a new forever family at the end of the month, which was three weeks away. Knowing that she wouldn't make it in time for it to be rehomed, Sam and I wanted to give her the life that she always deserved and decided to adopt her ourselves so that she had the farm to call her own and she had this loving, peaceful environment that she had deserved all this time and unfortunately didn't get as a younger dog. I called the oncology vet and I said, hey, I've noticed some swelling. She's limping a little bit on that leg. He said, oh, don't worry about it. We've got an appointment next week. Just monitor it and we'll see you then. And then when I got home and I saw that it was swollen all the way up her leg, I rang back again and he said, yep, come into emergency. Let's find out what's going on. So it was very sudden, that change. And when I picked her up to take her to the vet, I could feel just how tight and swollen and intense that arm was. It was a bit concerning, the realization that this is happening very fast. 
But she did come home with us that night. The emergency vet, they couldn't do anything for her. She was going downhill very quickly. And so we came to the decision that we needed to do the final act of love by calling it and not letting us suffer anymore. In those final moments, we were very upset and sad for Faith, given her very sad existence of, uh, and sad experiences. She found comfort in me, and so she was able to, you know, rest her head on my arm and get some comfort in the fact that she wasn't alone. I was there with her, and she showed that to me in her eye contact and, and her touch. So that was comforting that she didn't have to go through that alone, and she did find that she could finally trust, and I could help her at that moment. after receiving the injection. Just how quickly she gave up. Before they administered the, the main injection, as soon as that first anesthetic went in, she instantly collapsed. Straight away, she just gave up. And it was almost like a sigh of relief. Like she's like, oh, finally, pain-free. And I just realized in that moment that, yeah, we, you know, we made the right decision. She was suffering. Faith loved our bushwalks. She loved going on adventures around the property. She would get such a spring in her step when she realised we were going on a walk, we were going on an adventure. She liked just pottering along, sniffing around the trails and coming along knowing that we were all together. Even though she would keep at a distance from us humans, she got so much enjoyment on going on those excursions and, and she really enjoyed those outings. Faith had such a horrible and traumatic existence. We were just so happy that we could give her such a loving, peaceful last couple of months.